All right, so here's a uh, new uh, demo video on the, uh, the new styles within the color change fork. Um, so these are specific to SA22C's color change fork. Um, so all the styles that I'm going to go over today are um, only for that fork. So if you're using the main OS or a different version, um, that these styles aren't available to you. Um, so this is solely for color change. Um, so within the color change, the easiest start point, if you haven't read it, or if you have and want to refresh it, is the TRA thread on the Profi board color effect change, uh, the introduction and instructions. The original post has a lot of information in it, um, but if we're, we're going to scroll down here to uh, the current style section. Um, so within here, you'll see obviously the color change uh, effects that were added uh, for this fork. Uh, so color change, color change fade, effect scroll, and color scroll have been added. Um, those I'm going to cover separately. Um, but for right now, I'm going to focus on these new uh, styles that were added uh, with this fork, because that's been what uh, what's being requested. Um, so uh, I'll kind of go through all these. Basically, right now, there is no tool for this. So this will all be hand-coded. So uh, WordPad, Notepad, whatever you're uh, used to using for... Uh, you know, just typing your configs. Um, that's where I would use. Um, so I'm going to try to go through this step by step and just explain it. Um, but this isn't something you're going to be able to do in the style editor currently. Um, there will be uh, in the future uh, a style editor update uh, from Matt, I believe. Uh, but he's been really busy. I've been really busy. That's why it's been a you know kind of some time between posts. Um, uh, just real life, uh, obviously a lot of stuff. Um, but eventually we are still thinking of uh, getting a tool. Um, so for right now, if you're watching this now, before the tools exist, this will all be hand-coded. When the tools come out uh, and they're ready to go, hopefully I'll get some time and make an updated video. Um, but for anybody who's trying to do this stuff now, wants a little bit of a kind of guidance, uh, hopefully this will help. Um, so uh, what I'm going to focus on is going to be these styles. So localized lockup, I'll start off with. So uh, localized lockup is an effect that Matt created. Um, so Almost everybody's probably familiar with localized lockup that I created a while back, um, and then also force lightning lockup. Um, so basically, uh, what Matt did was he took the uh, those uh, effects that I created using the old lockup style, and he built out a style that actually handles them for you. So uh, the old way for localized lockup in the main OS was to actually build out uh, two pulsing gradients um, that would uh, section out the, basically segment the blade, and then only the center section of the blade would be affected uh, as if you were locking up uh, with another saber. And then force lightning lockup um, was a similar, but it's actually three uh, pulsing gradients, so it got really big. Um, and that would be to mimic uh, blocking a force lightning attack, like in the Revenge of the Sith uh, when Mace Windu faces Palpatine. Um, so uh, those were built using the old lockup style on the main OS, but they had a lot of code to get to that look. Um, and uh, because we wanted to have that, you know, kind of be animated and stuff, um, there was just a lot going on there. So it was, it was uh, a large amount of code. So uh, Matt took it on himself. He actually took my design for uh, localized lockup and force lightning lockup, and he coded them to now do all of the animation and the, um, the segmenting within the style. So now all you're going to style is actually what you want that section to look like. So what you want the center of the blade to look like and how you want it to move in terms of what they call, what he calls walk, which is the speed it moves up and down. Um, and you'll style that, but you don't have to worry about building gradients or pulses or strobes or all that. Um, and then force lightning lockup, because there's actually three parts of the blade that are affected, he built that as well. So now you'll section one, it will then show, uh, you'll build one effect for how you want it to look, but it will uh, move uh, and it will also uh, have the, uh, the three locations which blend to two, which then go back out to three, which is to mimic that dancing effect of the actual lightning kind of dancing along the blade like you see in that scene. Um, so all the, the heavy lifting is now done by this style, so it makes the implementation a lot easier. It also makes the code smaller. Uh, so I'll go over that. And then the uh, new sparks, which are transition effects uh, that we rolled out with uh, the color change fork. Um, so off spark uh, is the, an effect that happens while you're retracting your blade. Uh, so I use that in my cooldown effect uh, styles in the library. And then end spark, which is after you end a lockup, either the localized or force lightning lockup. Um, when you end that, there's actually a cooldown effect, which is running end spark, um, which is meant to be the blade kind of uh, restabilizing itself. And then chain spark is uh, 
I, I use that only in, in special instances. Change Spark works with color change, um, but it only works with the on the fly. Um, but what it is is when you trigger on the fly, it actually sticks a, an effect in while that color change is occurring. Um, I use it right now in my Coran Horn style in the library, um, and I've played around with it in other places. Um, but that one's a very specific use. Uh, off Spark and Spark and Chain Sparks uh, template wise are identical. Um, I'll touch on all three, but once you learn one, you, you're going to be able to do the others. Um, and they all work just like on Spark, which has been around forever. Um, on Spark is what I use to do my power up. So when you see in my library, if you see power up, uh, those styles, they're using an on Spark. And if you see power up cooldown, they're using an on Spark, an off Spark, and an end Spark. Um, and off Spark and end Spark are just the same cooldown, but they're for different purposes. Um, and I style them a little differently, but I'll kind of get into that. So let's start off uh, with the localized lockup. So localized lockup is, I'm just going to do super basic for the main blade, for the base, um, for these purposes. Uh, there are other videos on how to build out your base blade. Um, but, you know, for just to get started, I'm going to do a simple one. But then I'm going to show you kind of how to build out the rest. So the most important piece of any of these styles, especially if you're hand coding them, is having these templates available. So they're in green in this post. It's telling you what you need and where you need it. Um, so localized lockup being the style, the base color. Next would be the style or effect for lockup. Next is drag. Um, next is block. Now block is force lightning lockup. So in the code, it's called block because you're blocking force lightning lockup. Uh, but that's the, the two different states there. Uh, lockup walk is going to be the speed with which uh, your lockup moves if you want to set that. Um, so you don't have to. Uh, it's been fine-tuned um, to work without it. So basically the, the walk, the width for both lockup and uh, block are already, they're, they're uh, defaulted. So that means you don't need them. Um, but if you wanted to tweak them, you can, you, know, you can play with those numbers. Um, but I'll probably leave those out because it actually makes the style uh, trickier, um, you know, if you're first starting out. So what we'll focus on is the setting up a base, lockup, drag, and a block. Um, and then if you don't call these parameters, um, the OS will add them for you automatically. It just uses the default settings, um, which should, Matt spent a lot of time making sure that those look really good. So you know, they should look good right off the uh, right as soon as you implement them. So we're going to go in. I'm going to go into, I use WordPad. I've had questions. You can use Notepad, Notepad++, whatever you're comfortable with. For me, just on this computer, WordPad's just the easiest to get to. Um, so what I would do, uh, and uh, whenever I hand code, this is kind of how I always go about it, is I'm going to build out. Oops. So that's the call for that. And then I'm just taking, basically what I'm doing is I'm taking this template and I'm breaking it into different lines for each. And you always want to get your commas in place as well as your opening and closing brackets. So it's localized lockup, base, lockup, drag. I'm going by memory, but you can kind of see it out of the corner of the screen there. And then block, which is the force lightning lockup. And now, well, because I'm not going to put in the walk or the width, so you see walk, width, walk, width for block up, and I'm not putting those in. Uh, you don't need to add a comma after block. Instead, I'm going to end the localized lockup. So now, this is what makes up localized lockup. Um, so the reason I've broken out this way is to keep everything separate as you go, and then we'll recombine it. Um, you can leave, so line breaks, I've said this in other videos, line breaks and spaces do not affect anything. Um, it's just commas. Uh, if you have a comma in the wrong place, if you're missing a comma, or the bracket, either the opening bracket or the closing bracket, if you have those missing or in the wrong spot, that will mess your style up. But if you have, if you just took this as is, actually coded it the right way and put it in your config with all these line breaks, you just get a really long config, but it'll run fine. Um, so some people like being able to see that stuff broken out. Um, but so that's that's what I uh, that's what essentially we have to break down and work on. So now I'm going to jump in the style editor to style these individually. Um, I A lot of times I'm going to hand code these myself, but I want to show you guys kind of uh, how to go after these. Um, so first thing we got to do is design a base blade. Now, if you have a base blade already, uh, just go ahead and use it. Um, so 
because we're adding localized lockup, I'm going to make the assumption that we've already got a clash and a blast in place. Um, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll leave everything else out, but we're going to do a base blade, blast, and clash as part of our base um, just to make this simple. Now, if you wanted to put blast and clash outside of localized lockup, you could do that as well using nesting, but let's start simple. So we're going to go in to style editor. Let's design a simple blade. So we're going to start off with uh, our audio flicker blade. Let's Go change our colors up. Uh, let's go with uh, deep sky blue. And we'll do the alternate color for steel blue. Go back up top. Okay. So now those are good to go. So um, what I'm going to do now is this is the, the wrapping part uh, that I've shown. And again, if you haven't seen my other videos, some of this might not make sense. So maybe go back and watch them. Um, but I'm going to, instead of opening a new window, which I show in the other video, I'm just going to copy what I've got. So this is what I want my name blade to be. So I'm going to copy this. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create what I'm going to wrap around it. Um, and the reason I copied it was just in case I'd make a mistake. So wrapping, and I do this in WordPad, but I want to show you guys how to do it here for those of you who want to do it. So you can wrap in this line. So what we're going to do, first we're going to add a blast, right? Blast. The template for blast is the base color, which this says blue and then comma white. This is my base color. So I'm going to put blast outside of it. You need the opening bracket. And then at the end, so that now audio flicker, deep sky blue, steel blue, that becomes my main blade. I'm going to put a comma. And I'm going to put white. And then I'm going to close it. And now I can hit submit and it will put that in. And you see it now has that as my base. So blast, blast is in place. All right, so now I'm going to put, I want to put one of the clashes around it. So you've got, uh, there is, where'd you go? Simple clash, and then there's also localized clash. There it is, localized clash. So let's just do the simple clash. So again, I can wrap around. And when you're wrapping around, what that means is I'm putting whatever exists now as the base color of what I'm adding. On the other videos, I showed you how to do the nesting, which is where you would click into something and do it. This is now wrapping. Uh, so all that means is I'm wrapping a new effect around this. So I'm going to go, and you always got to make sure you're spelling everything right. So I'm going to do simple clash, opening bracket. And now that makes all of this, I'm going to make my base blade there. So the simple clash is that red is the base, white is the clash, and then this is your time. So I'm going to put a comma after all of that. Now let's do white again, and we'll leave it at 40 for now. And there, close it. You have to make sure you close it, and then hit submit again. And now I've wrapped simple clash around blast. Um, and then so I can see what that looks like. So that's my clash, and that's my blast. So that's good. And you can obviously tweak using clicking in here if I wanted to make that blast a little longer. And then hit submit, and then come back up here, and then that would be with the longer clash. Um, so you obviously we tweak this to how you want. Now I'm going to take all of this and I'm going to copy it. And that's assuming that's everything I wanted for that. Now we're going to go back into here and I've got my, this is my base. So I'm going to take away base. I'm going to make sure that comma stays and I'm going to paste this over it. So now that's my base blade. So now again, with localized lockup, we're going to style just the lockup section. So I'm going to go back to editor again just to show this visually for everyone. So next I got to design what I want my lockup to look like. Typically on my localized lockups, I like to use a random per LED or brown noise flicker um, for that cross section with the alternate color. So if it's a Jedi color like this is, I typically use a red and then I use white and that white is that flashing. Um, so I'm going to just, let's just grab, we'll do this with the random per LED flicker. All right, so I'm going to change this. I'll do it the way in here. Change this to red. So that's meant to be the saber you're crossing with. And the reason for that is when they, when you actually do cross the two blades, it just gives a little bit better effect as if those blades are really mixing together to create the sparks. Um, you can style it however you want. I'm just explaining how I usually do it. And then I'm going to change it out here. And I'll make that white because there's always that white flashing, um, which really just brings it to life. So that's now, now what we're looking at here, this is showing full blade. This will only appear in the cross section of the, um, 
of the localized lockup. So I'm going to take this, and you could style this further. Um, and a lot of my styles actually have a few layers to them on purpose. Uh, but again, keeping it simple just to get you started. I'm going to take this, and this is just, again, just the cross section of what I want. So I'm going to copy this. And we'll go to document we're working on. So that's going to be my lockup cross section. Again, don't lose your comma. So that's ready to go. Now, drag. Um, we're going to want to define drag if we're using force lightning lockup. If you left this blank, if you leave drag and, and block blank, they'll use the same effect. But uh, obviously, now that I have a red and white mix on a blue blade, that would look odd as a, as a tip drag. So what we're going to do here is I typically, again, I use brown noise flicker or random per LED flicker. Uh, depends on what you want, but we'll leave this. But I'm going to change this to the main blades color. So, and that was deep sky blue. And then, so this is what I usually do as a tip drag. And again, you're seeing it as full blade. It would only affect the tip within the style. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to set this as my drag. So I'll get rid of this. Keeping that comma. Always be very mindful of your commas and your close brackets. Uh, that's usually what breaks down when you go to compile is you accidentally overwrote one. Um, that's typically when I'm helping people out, that's what I see. All right, next, block. So block for force lightning, let's do a brown noise flicker this time. So again, I, I would use either random per LED or, or brown noise, but to make it different, we'll go to brown noise flicker. Now in the films, uh, particularly, usually the, the force lightning itself is a blue, purple, depends on the, special edition version or whatever, but I typically use just straight blue as the base and then white obviously being the energy. Um, so I'm going to change the first color to blue. I'm going to change the second one to white. Again, you can do whatever styles, uh, whatever colors you like. Um, and I want this to be really erratic because it's lightning. So I'm going to do this at like 300. Oops. Changing it over here. And then let's see what that looks like. So now that's meant to be that force lightning hitting your blade. Um, now, uh, again, this is showing you this full blade, just what the effect's going to be. When you actually put it in localized lockup and run it, it's going to have three spots on your blade that are going to move and that are going to, um, uh, the two bottom ones will actually kind of dance with each other. They'll come together. They'll go apart. Your top one will move. Um, that's all programmed into this style. So you don't have to worry about that animation part. You're really just styling what those sections are going to do. So that looks good to me this, copy it, and then put that in. And that's my block. So now, and I, I'm very mindful not to lose that closing bracket, so you'll see now there's two here. So now that is going to be my new base style. So that's localized lockup. So this is my base. This is my lockup effect. Again, only the cross section. This is my drag effect, only the tip. And then this is my force lightning or block effect. And this is the three sections that move. Um, so now those are all styled and ready to go. I'm going to recombine by getting rid of line breaks. That's just me. You can leave the line break. If you have spaces, you can leave spaces. Um, that's all fine. But this is now going to be my new base blade. Um, so I wanted to put this together. And we're going to leave this here. And now I'm just going to, for our purposes here, I'm going to build the next pieces separately from this, um, just kind of layering it. Um, so next, let's go back over here. So I'm going to show OnSpark because it's part of this group that I usually do. It's not new, though. Um, so you won't see OnSpark here, but it's the exact same setup. It's base, spark, and fade, which is length of time. So let's go here. I'm going to do, again, this is OnSpark. Open. Base, spark, and then time. So for time, let's let's put the milliseconds in now so that we don't have to worry about them. Um, so typically on a, a power up, I would do 600 to 800 milliseconds, uh, but it's going to depend on your blade extension speed and amount helper. So if you have a really long blade extension, uh, in terms of the the, the ignition time, uh, and you put a short uh, on spark in. You're not going to see it because your blade will uh, not have fully extended. So I typically usually would double the, at least double the extension time. Um, 
so I'll do 600 typically as a start point. And that's the fade milliseconds. And then I'm going to close this dial. All right, so that's the add-on spark. So now I already know my base plate is right here. So I'm going to copy this whole thing. And I'm going to leave this up top just to, so I don't lose it. So I'm going to paste that. All right, now I need to style my spark. So that's the effect that's going to happen when I first ignite. So let's go back to style editor. And again, you can hand code all of this. I'm just kind of jumping back and forth to show everybody. So typically I use a, either the hump flicker or I've been using actually a fire um, on some of mine. Um, but let's do hump flicker because it's a little uh, easier to understand. So hump flicker. The hump flicker, what I do is I will typically mix in the base color of the blade. This is a deep sky blue blade. And then I'll do white. Some colors I'll play around with this, but for our purposes, I'll do white. Let's leave it at that and do submit. And that's kind of what I want. So what's going to happen, and we can show this. So I'm going to show you. This is, pause your thought processes. I'm just showing on Spark so you can kind of understand it if you haven't seen it. But I'm going to type this out. So this part is not necessarily important. On Spark will need an in out helper to really see it. And again, I'll cover this in a little bit. Let's see. All right, so now I put an in out helper in. Uh, my base blade is just a straight deep sky blue. This is the On Spark that we were just styling. So this is this guy here. And this is the 600 milliseconds it's going to run for. All right, so now when I first turn this on, you'll see that hump flicker of white and blue uh, run, and then it will fade into the base plate. So that's that power-up effect. Now, uh, it looks better in person even than some of my videos to me personally, and better than Style Editor, but that's really what it is. So I'll turn it off. So that's that on-spark effect. Um, so I'm only showing you that. So let's get back to what we had here. So I'm going to clear all this stuff away. So this is that actual OnSpark effect. And you can lengthen the time, which we'll do in the other screen. So I'm going to say that I designed this how I want it. I'm going to take it, copy, and then I'm going to replace this spark with that. And again, I already showed you the 600 milliseconds. So now this is my OnSpark added for power up. So we're going to take this. All I'm doing now is getting rid of the line breaks. And now this will become my new base dial. So I'm going to cut this. And I'm going to paste it over this. So what I do at the top here, particularly if you're just starting out, is just to keep what I've already built so far so I don't lose it. If I happen to make a mistake or something happens. All right, so now that's going to be my next base. So now let's take a look at the off spark. So now off spark, I won't have the luxury of showing you that in Style Editor currently. But Allspark is actually the exact same format, so let's or same template. Uh, it's just triggered by a different action. So let's do Allspark space Spark. And now with Allspark, you want to time this to be the same as your retraction speed. Um, the reason for that is because if it ends too soon and your blade's still retracting, it really looks weird. Um, and if it's too long, um, you could have it where, because it didn't complete, the next time you ignite that blade and go to start it, it would reset its time. Um, so usually I set off spark at the exact same millisecond as the retraction speed. So on the one example I just showed you, I was using 300. Again, usually with the in-out helper, you're gonna, uh, your ignition and retraction, you want to time them out to your in and out sounds. Um, and uh, there's, you know, you can use... Uh, what is it, Audacity or whatever program, or sometimes the uh, your font makers also sometimes time them out for you in, in the readme's. They'll tell you how long they're, they're set for. Um, so, but at any rate, uh, I've been using 300 for this particular style. I'm going to leave it at 300. So this is Allspark. Uh, so that Allspark's the one where I would always time the fade speed in milliseconds to be the same as your retraction speed. Uh, and then we're closing that style. All right. So we already again have our base. Copy that, and I'm going to replace it here. Uh, 
So that's my new base. And again, what we're doing now is wrapping the rest. So let's go design our spark. So we can design the spark here. Um, so we were using this. Um, now for cool down, what I would usually do is, and, and I've done, a, I've actually tested a bunch of different ones. Um, let's take this, we'll do a little bit darker shade of the base color and then mix that with the white um, and then submit. And it's going to be a little subtle, um, but, uh, and there's a lot, I, I, off Spark, I've played around with a lot of things. So depending on which one you pull from the library, there's different mixes. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a very short time and it's kind of a, just a quick effect and it sometimes goes unnoticed, but it's, it's, it's an accent. That's what all these sparks are. So, uh, people like it. I, I, I kind of like it, um, for, you know, for fun styles. Um, I've said this in other videos when I do my Canon stuff, I won't include this cause it's not from the films. Um, but for those of you who want to use it, so typically design it how you like, but so let's do this. So I'm going to just say that this is good. So all I did was made it a little darker alternate with the white copy this and then I'm going to go here and I'm going to replace it right here. All right. So now this one, we can't preview until we load this to our, to our blade. Um, but we're going to have this ready to go. So now, and again, this is this going to be the same retraction speed I'm going to set. So I want to remember that. So now we will recombine by getting rid of all the line breaks. So now that's ready to go. Put this in place here. All right, so that's my new base blade. So just adding new base blade. All right, so now the last one, let's add an end spark. All right, so end spark is for after you've done a lockup. So it's again the same template. End spark. And now these I've been running longer, so let's do this for 800. Um, and it's just because it, 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 because you're doing that lockup usually for a long time, you want that kind of stabilization, that cool down effect to have some time to run. So we're going to set that one for 800. You, again, you can play with your timings. Um, so now base I already have. Always mindful of that comma not to get rid of it. Spark. Let's go design a spark. So for this one, let's use a flame. So here's what I've kind of been doing. So this one is going to go a little bit further with flame than what you guys have done in other videos, what I've shown in other videos. But we're going to go with, I want to go with the, let's do white. little too bright let's flip those and and you're gonna uh, i'm doing the hand typing in here you can do the work in here like we've shown in other videos so i'm just flipping those essentially all right so that's a little better so it's just a subtle brightness the white as the base was too much but here's what i've been doing so if you look in this template here you'll see warm color hot color delay and speed um, but what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the speed. And the main reason for that is I actually don't want it to look like a flame blade. I want it to look like the blade's unstable. So I'm going to actually go here and, well, we can do it two ways. Let's, let's do it hand coding since that's what we're doing. Next, the next integer is the zero. That's the delay. You don't need a delay on this, but I do want to do a lot more with the speed. So let's do a six. And that, it's a flame blade, but what it's actually doing is it looks like the blade is coming from the base and putting itself back together up, uh, particularly when you see this after doing a lockup. This is what I've been using. Um, you can tweak your colors, you can play around with it, but I've been using this as my end spark style. I really like it. If you also, you could do it similarly with a hump flicker. Um, hump flicker has a similar type of effect with that wave, like the blade recombining. But this is what I have been using that people seem to like. Uh, so this is what we're going to use as our end spark. And again, it's only running for 800 milliseconds, so it's a quick one, but it looks really good. So we're going to take this. And you can play with those speeds. You can play with delays. You can play with all of this stuff. But what we're doing for our purposes, we're just doing this. So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to replace the spark. 
again, I did not use that closing comma. So now I can recombine this. So there we go. So now that is my new one. So we will cut and we will paste it. So that is now the end spark. Now chain spark, because this isn't uh, set up as a color change style, it's the exact same thing. Same steps, same everything. So you would just repeat that and you would style what you want to have happen between the color change um, the same way. Um, so for our purposes, I'm not going to go into that. What I do want to show now is hand coding, how to end, how to close this all up, button it up for use. All right, so the last pieces, so this is now my base blade. So what we are going to do is we're going to, first I'm going to put the in-out helper in. So in-out helper obviously has to wrap around everything. So in-out helper. And then it's just base, which is this. So I can already leave this. I'm going to put my comma. Then it's going to be the uh, ignition time. So let's say 150. Again, you would time this to your uh, out sound. Retraction, we already said we're using a 300 here. Now, you don't have to put black. Uh, it will default, but I just, it's practice that I've done forever, so I'll just put it, and that closes it. So in-out helper, if we go over here, you'll see it says in-out helper white, 300, 800, black. So white, base color. 300 is the out or ignition speed. 800 is the in or retraction speed. And then black is what the blade looks like when it's off. Um, if you have like a crystal chamber, you have accent lights, and you want them to do something when the blade's retracted, you would put a color or an effect in place of black. This is for a blade, um, so we're going to leave that. So this is in out helper, the open, opening bracket. Base, in place of the white here, this is my base style. Then I have my ignition speed, and my retraction speed, and my black. And now I can recombine those. Just getting rid of line breaks, not getting rid of commas or brackets. And then the last piece of the puzzle is adding that style PTR around everything. So let's do style PTR open. And then it always ends with... Now, you can also, if you wanted to put a description on this, you would put it uh, with a comma this and this is all in the manual but you could also do that um, so it depends on what I'm doing but I sometimes include these sometimes I don't um, but that's basically the close and then we'll recombine this and that's what my style will be so now I'm going to take this guy and copy him and let's go into our config so let's just add this as a new one and I've shown this before and again this is also in the manual you can refer to that um, so we're going to do opening a preset. Let's pick our folder on our SD card for the font. Let's pick a track. I'm just copying what I have in place now. You would obviously do whatever you wanted. And then I always do the close at the end of it, just so I keep that. Uh, so this is, this is meant to be a single preset. And now we're going to drop our new style in place. And that's good to go. And then you would, of course, save your config. And it's all set. So that was adding localized lockup, uh, end uh, spark, off spark, and on spark all to a style as you build it, um, all using hand coding. Um, so then, of course, you would you know, test this out on your blade because some of those styles are not visible in editor. You want to see what they actually look like and then go back and tweak. Um, and what you, what, what I would do with tweaking, um, actually I'll show you. So let's go backwards on this and I'm going to keep this here, right? So here's how I go backwards. I always find these opening brackets first. So let's pull style PTR. And all I'm doing is I'm trying to get it back so I can see everything. So I'm just putting a line break everywhere something comes in. Now I know, and I remember this was my base blade. So I'm going to stop here and leave that comma. And then I'm going to put, now what I'm doing is I'm looking for closing brackets and then obviously commas related to them. So closing bracket and comma. And then closing bracket, comma. Closing bracket, comma. Closing bracket and comma. Oops, don't mess up. Closing bracket and comma. 
using brackets. So this is from, this is the style. Oops, we'll break it right here just for now. So this will go up to comma. And then I'm going to explain why we're doing this in one second. All right, so now reading this all backwards. So the way it works because of these templates, right? So you're, if you, we'll start with the in out helper. Style PTR is its own thing, but in out helper. First is the base color, white, ignition, retraction, black. So this right here is my in out helper. This is the close of in out helper. That means that everything else between here, that means all of this. Is going to be the base of in out helper all right so that's how we work backwards right so now next up is n spark so n spark isn't here but it was in this thread right so n spark is base spark and fade so let's see so we already know that this 150 this is this is the end of in out helper that means that this 800 that's the milliseconds to end the n spark but there's also a, a spark part so let's put this back that makes this my end spark so end spark this is the spark and the fade milliseconds to that all right and that makes everything here that makes this the base of end spark let's go next is off spark so off spark so let's go find our spot here so this is the milliseconds for off spark and then we know there's going to be a spark effect there. So it's got two parameters. So that makes this the close of off spark. So that means that on spark to here is now that's the base of the off spark. And all we're doing is working backwards within the nesting. Um, and this is more if I wanted to find something to fix. Um, so now let's go. So on spark. So the close of OnSpark is going to be down here. So this is the milliseconds for OnSpark, which we know. Let's put that back. There's this. So this is the spark effect. So that makes all of this the base color of OnSpark. And now, now that I've gotten past all those other sparks, let's take all of this and bring it over to style it. Now I can keep going. So. Uh, let's actually let's do localized lockup in here since it won't work anyway. So localized lockup has a base, a lockup, a drag, and a block. That's what we put in. So localized lockup. So this is block, right? That's what we style for block. That makes this drag. That's what we style for drag. That makes this lockup. So that makes all of this the close or the 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 second, third, and fourth parameters of localized lockup, which means that this is now the base of localized lockup. So that means that very simply now, this is clash, this is blast, and this is base. So that's just how you read it. Um, you have to know your templates to be able to do that. But now if I wanted to change something in here, this is where I can do it. So say I wanted to just make that uh, end spark, uh, or not, yeah, end spark a little shorter. Say it was running for too long. So end spark, if you go to the end, right? So this is the in out helper. That makes this end spark. I can change that here. And then you would recombine everything. Um, so what you want to get used to is that the opening, everything between the opening and the ending is the base. And then there's your ending. So that this is the ending of in out helper. This becomes style fire becomes the ending of end spark. So basically just moving up a line each time. This is off spark. This is the base. This is the ending. This is on spark. This is the ending of on spark. So these are styles related to on spark. This is localized lockups. This is just makes this the base of it. And this becomes the and because localized lockup has several parameters there, I'm combining in one line. So again, it would be lockup is first, 
and that becomes the uh, drag, and then the brown noise clicker becomes the block. So that's how you would read that. So that's just if you needed to break that apart. Usually what I do is I do look up, I look first for these openings, and then you're going to look for the, clo the close bracket comma, and that's what breaks uh, breaks everything down. And then you do have to understand what makes up each of those effects to be able to fully break it apart, but that's how I go about that. Um, so now, if you wanted to do other things, add other effects in there, you could do it the same way we were showing. Um, so what you're going to do, though, is you're going to work within these guys. So just for purposes, since people have asked, uh, let's recombine all of this as our base. So this is now my base, right? So this is the close of in-out helper, and this is the close of the style PPR. So that makes this my base. So we're going to add one more piece to this. And uh, it's come up, uh, on, particularly on my library styles, people want to add uh, uh, stab um, to it. So I don't use stab. I have my reasons. Um, but stab is very easy to add. So I will show you how to add it. So we're going to add stab, and we're going to wrap it around everything. So that's stab. That's the call. This becomes the base of stab. All right, so let's put a line break. Now I have to style stab. Let's just do a white. And then there's one more parameter in stab, which you would read um, within the uh, actual, uh, if you look in styles and then look up the stab.h folder, it'll tell you. But that's the timing parameter. Uh, and it, it's going to depend. Uh, I've seen 1,400, 12. It's really whatever you like. But these are going to be your two closings. So this is your actual stab effect. Now, if you wanted to put an effect in there, you could build it out. Uh, I'm just dropping white in. And then this is how long that stab goes for. So how long does that tip of the blade be affected um, by the stab? Um, and again, this is only for the color change fork. I know Frederick's already looking at doing it, and he probably will do it slightly different. Um, so this is color change fork using stab, how you add it. So you're going to style your effect for stab here. We'll just set white and your time for stab here. And then this is my base blade. And I basically what I did was I stuck it right inside in that helper. So that means the close to it is going to be right inside the end of the out helper. And then I can put this all back together again. And you'll get some line breaks here because of spaces. So let's just pull this all back. And this is ready to go. We'll copy it. Go back in here. Now, just say I just wanted to add that or update this one, I would just highlight within the style PPR itself and paste. And that now added, I did a change for my end spark for timing, and I added a stab effect here, and save it. And now this is ready to go and upload to it. So as long as you didn't overwrite any commas or miss any brackets, this would compile. If you get a compile error, those are the two to always look for is a missing comma someplace or a missing close bracket. And uh, I'll probably have to, you know, it's, it's a little hard. Uh, there's trying to mimic all the possible things with, um, with the, uh, the di possible errors. Actually, I have thought about it. It becomes very difficult because there's actually so many. Um, so it's more just as you go through and test stuff. Um, but I'll see if there's a way to figure out something to explain how to read that in the future. But so this is those new styles. Um, hopefully this helps uh, some of you guys out. Uh, again, if you have questions, if you get into uh, somewhere where you get stuck, you can always uh, ask um, myself or you can post uh, in TRA thread uh, or on uh, Facebook group. Um, but hopefully this gets you guys started.